Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Analyst Corner with NASCOM Insights. I am Vandana and I'll be your host for today. Uh, in today's episode, we will talk about the engineering R&D industry. On behalf of NASCOM Insights, I would like to welcome Mr. Parik Jain, CEO, EIIR Trent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Vandana and NASCOM. Happy to be here. Looking Thanks. forward to a great discussion. Thanks. Thanks, Pari. Thank you so much. Uh, so, of course, you know, here we are talking about the engineering R&D sector, which has been the silver lining, uh, you know, among the all the, you know, all the results that we have seen uh, in this quarter. And we can see that how the pure play ER&D companies have had a stellar Q1. And so, you know, could you please throw some insights on, on what were the drivers uh, for this? How were they able to, you know, achieve this stellar Q1 results? And what is your take on it? Yeah, I think last quarter was fabulous for mm. Indian engineering service providers. And I always believe that an inflection point has reached for engineering services, like it was IT for 20 years back. And that is reflected mm. in this quarter results. So there are many reasons for it. Like, first of all, it's a huge market, untapped market, early 66% is outsourced and less than 2% is offshore. So essentially, yes. we are not too much dependent on macro conditions. We are, we are more competing internally uh, for the growth. The other point is that there was a perception for a long time that R&D cannot be outsourced. Even if you outsource, it cannot be offshore. And pandemic mm. changed that. People saw that you can do all these yeah. things virtually. And that is being reflected now in more work being given to ERD service providers. Other thing was that these companies are struggling for the digital talent. It's very difficult mm. for a ERD enterprise to find out or to attract the digital talent. And that's where they need help from some of the outsourcing partners. And four, mm. I think this is the most important reason what happened after pandemic was that engineering or R&D outsourcing was never for cost or for very little. It was for cost. It was mainly, mainly for uh, in, uh, reducing time to market or access to skills. Mm -hmm. But after pandemic and right now, so much macro conditions are going on, people want to reduce yeah. cost also. And for mm -hmm. reducing cost, uh, one of the major driver is that you do globalization and best sure costing, maybe for engineering service providers and the GCCs. Uh, and last yes. point is this also this MNA significant portion of the growth was inorganic for most of the service providers. Mm -hmm. Right now, yeah. the valuations are very realistic because of the macro conditions. And also mm -hmm. the service providers have become ambitious in acquiring firms. So mm -hmm. having said that, I think all credit goes to engineering service providers. Potential was always there, but somebody has to go out and convert them into reality. And this quarter has shown that these service providers have gone out and able to perform as we were expecting. True, true. Very true. I mean, completely agree. And that's why we know we could see the results showing up as well. Uh, in this quarter, all the, uh, you know, um, M&As that happened during the last year, they were able to show proof and result, you know, in this quarter. So, yeah. So now vertical wise, if we see uh, which verticals do you think have witnessed growth uh, in this, you know, in the first quarter of the financial year and any major shifts or changes that you have witnessed, uh, which are different from the last quarters? Yeah, I think essentially seeing two, three things. First, there are few uh, tailwinds and few headwinds. Mm -hmm. So in tailwinds, uh, the, where the growth is coming on two sectors, mainly from automotive and aerospace. Yes. So automotive, we all know, is going through so much disruption. You, the so auto OEMs and the tire yeah. ones have to invest in your autonomous, connected, yeah. electric. And simultaneously, your R&D budgets are not increasing. R&D budgets are mm -hmm. always linked to your sales. In last two years and all, it was not good for sales. So R&D budgets have been going down or your R&D requirement is going up. So I think they are going for large outsourcing uh, programs and that is being reflected here. Other headway or oh, sorry, tailwind we see in aerospace industry. Aerospace mm -hmm. industry was most hit in during COVID. And after that, it bounced back. And when it's bouncing mm -hmm. back, they don't have too much, too many people available in the workforce. So that's why True. they are outsourcing more. And many of you see that uh, even if they are not traditional aerospace engineering service providers, they are being impaneled and provide, given the opportunity to do work. And also true, you true, see true. that there's a 10 year backlog for this uh, this uh, Airbus, Boeing and all, and they need a lot of help in also the manufacturing side, supply chain, industry 4.0. So that is the tailwind. And headwind we are seeing uh, here is now in software product engineering uh, or mm. digital engineering. This had the purple patch for last three, four years, very high growth and valuation. But now mm. overall, uh, 
little bit digital is down and that is reflecting in IT service results also. So for us, yes. that is being reflected in the software product engineering uh, companies. Other uh, this uh, verticals are more or less like subdued little bit. But here also mm. in software product engineering and other verticals, cost takeout deals are there. If you see that uh. some of the pure place, uh, even if that vertical is not doing well, there are opportunities to go to customer and help uh, mm. them reduce the cost. So uh, service providers who are able to do cost takeout deals in software product engineering and other verticals also are doing well. Wonderful, wonderful. That is great. I mean, that's really great that, you know, we are not really focusing on the uh, traditional ones, but also now other uh, verticals are also emerging. So that is really great. So what about the integrated players and, you know, how has the growth been for them uh, in the first quarter uh, in ERND? So what, what, right. what can you share about that? Yeah. Actually, integrated players results have been mixed. So we are seeing mm. similar headwinds and tailwinds here. So like their auto aerospace, everybody is going double digit even in the integrated players. They are having more impact for digital and software product engineering, which is somewhat declining or low mm. growth uh, here. And yeah. also one thing to understand that uh, integrated players have a higher scale than pure plays, sometimes double of the revenue. So, mm. so that uh, sometimes growth rates cannot be comparable for a $2 billion firm versus $500 billion uh, pure True. play. So that is also being reflected. One hmm. uh, area where integrated players have advantage is that uh, large integrated deals where engineering is one tower. Like you have apps, you have infra, you have BPO and engineering. Yes. And these yes. are billion dollar plus deals. So wow. right now, wow. and these deals take time, one or two years to in making to get hmm. there. But what is to get there? You get a short revenue for many years. So right now, hmm. last two, three, two, three months, we are seeing a lot of billion dollar deals in IT and in a lot of them engineering has been a component. So true, true. Going forward, I think the pure, oh, sorry, the this thing, integrated players mm -hmm. will also do well on the back of mm -hmm. some of these integrated deals. Some have announced and some are in pipeline. And I think last next couple of years, these integrated players will be also bounce back on the back of this amount of integrated deals. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, you know, have they been? Have there been some uh, changes in the outsourcing trends as well uh, from other geographies to India? So do you think that has seen an increase or a decrease or some new geographies have sort of emerged uh, that we can witness? I think that's a clear trend here. Uh, mm. Like uh, engineering is being shifted to India from other geographies. Yes. And that we see in the vendor consolidation deal. When, when we mm. see a vendor consolidation deal, you are taking work from other geographies uh, or the mm. other vendors, either to client side of it, or you see the from other service providers, you are replacing them. Mm -hmm. And other way to look at is a lot of these European pure plays or global pure plays are opening centers, delivery centers in India. Yes, they've accelerated yes. in last one year. So mm. even now many of the players have the double digit, uh, this thing, your headcount is coming in India. Mm. And this is for the three reasons, if you see. One is definitely the cost of talent uh, scale is unparalleled in India. The quality yeah. of talent here. And also the de-risking, especially of the Ukraine walls and all, people want to de-risk also uh, geography-wise. Yes. So mm. I believe that India is the winner, whether it is that by our Indian pure place service provider or by GC or even the European or mm. global place who are operating True. more out of India. So India is definitely mm. getting work from other geographies by different players. Oh, wonderful. Also, you know, many countries are actually uh, and many companies actually are actually focusing on a China plus one strategy. Right. So that plus one is, you know, is where India features very favorably. Definitely. Uh, so, you know, that is where uh, because we have talent big at scale and yeah. good talent as well, good engineering talent available. So that definitely, uh, you know, actually works in our favor. Definitely. So according to you now, you know, which have been the top m and deals? You spoke that there have been, uh, you know, many in there is inorganic growth as well through m and mergers and acquisitions, whether, you know, with the integrated players as well and the pure play uh, companies as well. So what, according to you, were the top m and deals this first quarter and what other deals have you also witnessed that you want to, you know, sort of highlight uh, whether it is with respect to the deal sizes or the you know, what about the duration? Are we witnessing some small, uh, you know, deals or are we witnessing bigger, larger deals of larger duration uh, in engineering R&D? Right. I think there are two. Uh, one is m and deals, one is the contract deals and both have mm. increased uh, size-wise, mm. duration-wise and all. m and is like the last two quarters have accelerated uh, compared to mm. what, what was there in 2022 uh, calendar year and 2023. I think like, like last two quarters that m and have accelerated by 20-25% overall at, yeah. at macro global level. The two mm. things uh, come to mind immediately was this thing. One is SCL SF group. Uh, 
uh, they acquired a company in, in Germany. And one is this uh, Zorient acquired recently the Thau Centric. So if you see the yeah. MNA rationale for engineering service water is mainly for three reasons. Either you increase your augment your vertical capability or you yeah. augment your service capability or you augment yes. geography. So yes. if you see that SCL SF deal, it was more about augmenting your automotive capability and the yes. geography capability in Germany. If I mm. see that Zorian Thau centric deal is was augmenting service capability in management consulting and also vertical mm. capability in CPG. So that kind of deals are there where you augment your vertical capability or horizontal capability or geography mm. capability and they are finding opportunities. Now mm. coming to this uh, uh, large deals in the contract deals here. Uh, here also we are seeing both like I see the integrated deals where you have engineering is one part of it and mm. then you have the standalone deals by pure play players. So one mm. biggest deal from pure plays was this from uh, Honda to KPIT. It was $250 million, yes. uh, more than eight years uh, yeah. deal. Th that kind of deal was there. From LTTS won this thing uh, with one of the media clients of $50 million. They, had, mm. they took up a debt cost takeout deal. From an integrated yeah. perspective, recently Infosys won with Liberty $2.5 billion. A significant exactly. part was engineering uh, yes. out there. So a yeah. lot of deals are there in, you see in the new areas also like automotive where you have the more soft capability and then you have this cost takeout deals also. The sectors are not doing well, but you are taking and, and we have, they are very large, uh, your contract value, large duration, mm. eight, 10 years. So that kind of things are happening. It's good for predictability of revenue, more large deals we won, uh, yeah. which has more the your dollar value and more is the duration is good, good for predictability mm. of revenues. Going true, forward. true, true. Absolutely. And this is exactly, you know, sort of uh, different from uh, the, uh, you know, other sectors, mainly IT services, because there we are saying mid, uh, mid sized deals of shorter durations. Uh, but here, you know, it's heartening to see that, yes, uh, you know, companies are winning longer duration and large size deals as well, which would actually sort of uh, solidify their revenue pipeline as well. Yeah. Great. So, uh, with respect to, you know, we see that uh, how other uh, sectors and other technology segments, with respect to hiring, they are witnessing a slowdown. But ERD and, you know, they are continuously, uh, we are seeing continuous growth in headcount in ERD sector. So, you know, what have been the strategies of the companies? How are they still continuing to hire? And what skills also are they looking to, you know, invest on? And they, what are they look out, looking out for? So your thoughts on that? Right. Actually, hiring mm -hmm. is directly linked to revenue growth. Yes. So if you see that IT service providers didn't have too much mm -hmm. growth, uh, growth last couple of quarters, so the hiring is reflecting in hiring numbers. Uh, on the other hand, engineering service providers had a good double digit growth and that is reflected like everybody has the positive hiring in last True. couple of quarters. And that is reflect mm -hmm. also aligned to your headwinds and tailwinds. Like we have the tailwind, we talked about automotive and aerospace and their yeah. hiring is going on. In automotive, True. is more about the EV side of it, software defined vehicles or yes. embedded part of it. Aerospace mm. is more about the supply chain part of it, more about manufacturing, industry 4.0. Mm -hmm. And also overall the industry 4.0 thing is going on. So these sectors going. Software yeah. product engineering, a little bit of uh, you have the downside of it or, or subdued. So not too much hiring is mm. going on right now. Okay. Other, other, apart the strategies, how they adopt is very interesting. I see the pure service providers versus IT service providers. Because they do a lot of this uh, hackathons or the innovation competitions with the colleges. And it's not mm. one day event. I've seen the many pure play service providers doing year long events with well, yes. plus colleges. Yeah. They invite these uh, this professors and students to participate. They give exact problem for the customers and then yeah. they evaluate their POCs and then present awards. So that gives them continuous pipeline of yes. like 1000 plus colleges, 10,000 plus students they see and, and they can just them beyond yeah. the interview or the grading of the colleges that gives them a lot of pipeline to identify who are really uh, good at engineering, who had a passion for engineering. And so that has been a good uh, hiring strategy for a lot of these mm -hmm. players, either hackathons or innovation competitions and all that. So that is a constant pipeline, even if they don't require them today, you know yes. who are the people good at it and you can call them when required. So this mm -hmm. is something I think more companies need to do more of it to not only just a recruitment test yeah. and all, but give them a year long project and especially engineering, you need more hands on. Yes. So one interview is not justified enough to find out the talent beyond grades and colleges reputations, give them projects. And this is a good way to give them year long projects. True, true, you know, absolutely true. And, you know, of course, uh, this is actually a great, uh, you know, way to judge as well that apart from the bookish knowledge, what yeah. else 
you know and sometimes some people can't even uh, they are not able to win in a stress interview right. so these year long projects are really great way of actually judging the caliber of the uh, you know of the students as well so that's a great right. strategy and a very unique one i think right. no i i don't think other industries are doing a year long hackathon or year long uh, you know engagement programs with these colleges right and right also yeah. because of this thing like we have uh, talent at uh, scale in india but problem is how True. to identify them is about like yeah. people talk about employability of this talent and this is a good way yes. to go to yeah. tier 3 and 4 colleges and identify gems out there Uh, true, instead true, of only true. focusing on tier one, where everybody is focusing, and you are not, might not able to find a talent. Uh, true, true, required. absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes. Now, uh, you know, of course, uh, this year there has been a lot of chatter about Gen AI, and uh, you know, of course, uh, with engineering, we have seen that companies uh, are, you know, also now, uh, you know, adopting. Uh, they have already done that during COVID and post COVID as well. so uh, they have been very and digital engineering has been a very important part for it so they have adopted uh, emerging technologies and emerged technologies like uh, cloud computing as well they have embraced it really well so what do you think uh, you know what do you think are the is the effect of these emerging technologies like gen ai or quantum computing uh, you know or other uh, emerging technologies on engineering r and d companies yeah so interesting question here like engineering companies are both the enabler and user of these technologies For example, mm. tech cloud. The cloud yeah. engineering versus engineering cloud. Yes. Engineering cloud is that you use cloud in your engineering operations, maybe design, manufacturing, supply yeah. chain, and all. And cloud engineering is enable everything cloud. Like whatever, wh- whoever, all applications are going cloud. The plumbing or the backbone mm. is that uh, cloud engineering by some of the software product engineering firms. Yeah. So in cloud engineering, we are seeing slowdown because slowdown in digital and cloud, which is reflected in hyperscalers mm-hmm. result, IT service providers results, and similarly, mm. we have some slowdown here. But engineering cloud. Uh, has been a laggard. Like engineering was one of the last uh, functions to move because of conservative nature and high workload. Yeah, they didn't move to mm-hmm. cloud as fast as mm-hmm. we would have expected them. So that engineering cloud movement is still going on. I see a lot of people mm-hmm. going, companies going on and hiring in the PLM side of cloud or industry 4.0 on cloud. So that is going on. But cloud engineering is, is there. Similarly, if you say mm-hmm. generative AI is early days and lot of hype and excitement is there. So similarly, generative AI will divide into two. Similarly, generative AI use cases in engineering. Versus mm. engineering as an enabler for generative AI, and both yes. ways engineering will benefit of it. Like engineering as a value chain, if you see generative AI in design, in manufacturing, yeah. in uh, supply chain and operations, here the emerging use cases yes. are emerging, and I think it will be go for engineering cloud way. It will little will be really conservative in engineering side initially, and then when picks up, it will pick up a lot of this in engin- yeah. generative AI in the engineering. On the other side, generative AI is an enabler. Uh, mm. Or like engineering as an enabler for generate larger generative AI use cases across industries across IT firm. There we see lot of uh, uh, role and opportunities for software product engineering firm. In fact, we think that that will be next growth driver for them. Right now, growth is subdued because digital is down. Mm. I think generative yeah. AI for generative AI you need a uh, lot of data, clean data and all these. Yes. That will be uh, work of all the data engineers of it. And then you have to lot of LLM models are. Coming on, you have mm. to integrate them, and a lot of training is required. So I think it will lot work of digital and software product engineering service providers. So I think, or we think rather, is a growth driver will be growth driver for digital engineering service providers. Interesting. Oh, very nice. So I mean, we've also heard uh, like you know from engineering companies, you know, and one of them, uh, you know, in a, one of our conversations, they had said that you know our highs may not be so high as other sectors, but our lows are never low right. as right. other right. sectors as well. So if there is a steady growth, yeah, you know, right, we right. If there if we if we are saying there is double digit growth that will continue on with the hiring with the revenue growth as well that will continue to grow. Yeah. So to come back yeah. to original point yeah. because our uh, penetration is very low. True. So true. In a way, we are not competing with each other that to get the deal. Yeah. We are competing yes. with the perception of these leaders to that more outsource more to India and that is increasing and increasing for good. So yeah. that's where it is a long runway and long visibility. Uh, for engineering services growth, so more about competing um, internally rather than externally. <laughs> true, true, absolutely. So now, you know, what do you think is expected in the next quarter or in the next two quarters? What do you think will the content will these segments that have grown uh, in this sector in this uh, in this quarter will they continue to grow? Will we expect similar growth pace and growth rate? Uh, you know, what do you think is uh, your view on the next few quarters as well? I think it should be similar uh, to what mm. we see in this quarter. 
they will be one ups and downs based on company specific performance but i think trends headwinds and tailwind trends are very clear that mm. automotive aerospace should continue to do good yeah. and software product engineering will be down other verticals depending on macro situation mm. they might be ups and downs but still mm. as we said we are not too much competing with macro environment we are competing with perceptions so a lot of the cost take out deals are available so if service providers mm. are able to win more cost take out deals even we can go higher than our mm. current mm. growth rates and also integrated yeah. players will join the party so like now large deals are coming a billion dollar plus deals with significant portion yes. of engineering so overall sector growth rate should be much higher uh, going forward uh, next couple of quarters than what was seen here mm. great great yes i mean that that is heartening to hear then so you know because we can witness if we are expected to see uh, such double digit growth uh, you know in the next quarters as well so yeah. that would be that would bode well for the overall industry right. so you know now uh, there are two very big components there is service providers and then there are the gccs in the industry so and gccs uh, the gcc story in india it has been driven by the engineering r and d sector only so majority of the more than you know uh, majority of the uh, gccs in india are uh, engineering r and d uh, gccs only and the talent as well uh, you know that has been r and d talent only that has uh, you know that is here in india so what do you think uh, what are the new gccs that are emerging in the r and d space Uh, is there any news of some uh, new companies and new gccs new mncs setting up shop in india uh, are they hiring as well uh, so any any news on the gcc front engineering r and d gccs right. as so to say yeah, absolutely right gccs yeah. are important component of our yeah. r and d ecosystem in india and whatever is said about the growth drivers of engineering service part are equally applicable to gccs also so mm-hmm. you have this uh, for this cost take out talent and mm-hmm. all these re- reasons this is also increasing but there is uh, like sufficient room for growth like give and take we have 1500 ah. uh, gc uh, uh, yeah. organizations of gcc in india and easily it can scale to 5000 if you like if you want yes. to like globally there 5000 ah. might be the companies who have need for gcc so there is a uh, uh, potential out there other True. thing what is interesting thing is happening and which is impacting gcc is more and also new service provider mm. our india market and manufacturing story so now mm. what you see the trifecta of uh, our engineering r and d ecosystem manufacturing local manufacturing and india market opportunities this is creating uh. the opportunity for gcc specifically for india market also earlier yeah, gcc was yes. started from support to global market then some product lines were out of here now yes. because of india market you mm. see that gcc will produce products for india and, all, and oh. that will have the next uh, basically wave mm. of the investment in gcc and it is most uh, visible in the semiconductor sector if you see that semiconductor yes. we are putting our money in the fabs and all mm. there are some successes here and then you see that companies who are investing in the gcc is the last 3 months in the this uh, in the semiconductor sector you have applied mm. materials investing in india amd is establishing in this microchip is there even microns mm. are there and and if you see that they are also investing for global and also india market potential india market and that will see across high tech uh, automotive and all more and more gccs yeah. will have Uh, India market also, and that's why we'll also give importance to GCC. They are not only the R&D back office globally; they will also mm. integrate the market facing units in India, mm. so, and that will also bring closer to customers and market. Some of the uh, little bit of yes. uh, what you call problem with or what you call disadvantage of GCC is was you are not closer to market. You are sitting here and exactly. the market for US and yeah. Europe. But then, if you are working for Indian, I have all, yeah. already seen some of this uh, railways, GCC, and all. They were involved in lot of this one day matram work. chains and all those chains mm. and all and they get interaction so gcc yeah. is also will be more involved in direct customer interactions and that will have increased the capability mm. and globally also that uh, r&d follows the manufacturing that's the reason mm. you have so much in china so if we have lot of manufacturing investments in different sectors in india and it really picks up i think it will be double engine for these gccs also apart from global talent we have to have this for r&d also and it will be good for both overall service provider ecosystem mm. gcc ecosystem and overall good for india great great and that's like you know so heartening to see because uh, you know we have seen that uh, the newer gccs are also coming through and then uh, setting up uh, you know shop, shop here and of course uh, you know i think post covid also we have seen that the location proximity to the hq sort of has vanished so right. people are actually you know going towards locations which are best suited for them exactly. and uh, of course india is you know featuring a, a lot there Definitely. and has a very favorable position yeah and also this market thing will be 
add further to the capabilities of GCC that you directly mm-hmm. involved in the market producing products. Right? Exactly. So you're uh, marketing, you know, you are producing for the domestic uh, market, yeah, market and that actually, you know, will help bolster the Make in India uh, campaign yeah. as well. Yeah. Really. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, thank you so much, you know, for, for such wonderful insights, uh, Parikh. Such great uh, insights and, you know, very detailed ones as well. You've gone into the details as well. So, yeah, with that, it is a wrap on this episode of Analyst Corner with NASCOM Insights. So, hope all of you enjoyed this discussion on uh, the detailed insights on engineering R&D sector. And thanks a lot, Parikh, again for sharing such wonderful insights. Thank you. So, Thank you, Vanna. Yeah, Pleasure. Talk thanks a lot. So, viewers, uh, stay tuned for more insightful discussions happening in the Indian tech and engineering R&D industry with NASCOM Insights YouTube channel. And please like, share, subscribe. And so, you know, till then, it's goodbye from everyone here uh, at NASCOM Insights. So thanks a lot, Pari. Thank you so much.